India is witnessing a rapidly changing food landscape in the context of lifestyle changes, food habits and scientific findings. New estimates show that 56.4% of the total disease burden in the country is due to unhealthy diets. Food systems are also responsible for one-third of the greenhouse gas emissions. Thus, sustainable eating helps address the problems with our food systems by consuming foods that are produced in an economically, socially and environmentally responsible manner. The transition in our food habits in our countries is really a bothersome category. We are eating more packaged food, we are eating more processed food, more food which is cooked outside. India's food choices have shrunk. We have lost the knowledge about how local biodiversity can be used as food. We are consuming intensively grown produce and processed foods. Set against this, the Indian Council of Medical Research and the National Institute of Nutrition ICMR -NIN, has issued 17 dietary guidelines to meet the requirements of essential nutrients and prevent non-communicable diseases such as obesity and diabetes. These comprehensive recommendations were created by a diverse team of specialists under the guidance of Dr. Hemlata R., the director of ICMR NIN. It lays a lot of emphasis on balanced diet, food groups and the variety within the food groups which basically makes it easier for people to understand and apply. It also talks about uh, how in different physiological roles these could be applied and what is relevant for a small child or a growing child or a lactating or a nursing mother or an elderly. It also gives good options for vegetarian and non-vegetarian population which is very relevant in our, in our country. So, and, and then I would say the reasons, the rationale given for a particular kind of diet are also mentioned. The science of it is also the numbers and the estimates, how they ultimately add up to a particular value are also very clearly given. According to the ICMR's diet booklet, Indians are advised to derive macronutrients and micronutrients from at least eight food groups for their daily meals. It recommended vegetables, fruits, roots and tubers to compose about half of the daily food intake with the remaining portion consisting of cereals, millets, pulses, flesh foods, eggs, nuts, oil seeds and milk or curd. Similarly, vegetarians should eat foods like flax seeds, chia seeds, etc. as there is a challenge for them to get enough B12 and N3 polyunsaturated fatty acids. According to ICMR, the World Health Organization is considering revising its recommendations and reducing calories from sugar to less than 5% kilocalories a day. Himlata R told Down to Earth that if you consume sugar, at least try to restrict it to around 30 grams a day. She said that sugar should be avoided as much as possible, especially for children younger than two. If consumed long term, ICMR NIN authors said that sugar substitutes such as sweetening agents like aspartame and saccharin can lead to obesity, diabetes, hypertension and other non-communicable diseases. The scientists who drew up the dietary guidelines also advised against consuming high quantities of protein, especially in the form of protein supplement powders, due to various risks like kidney damage, dehydration and nutrient imbalances. We need to bring back the local biodiversity into our diets. So we need to consume more of local greens such as uh, leaves of pilkhan and people and also local fruits such as falsa and mulberry. Also we can uh, include local legumes such as kumatia and sangri. So ICMR could have suggested inclusion of uh, local foods into the diet and these foods are rich in micronutrients so that would take away their concern about loss of micronutrients in people. The guidelines are talking only about the nutrition fact labeling, the nutrition information which is given in very small font, largely only in English at the back of the pack. Those are complex numbers. These guidelines are largely silent on the front of pack labeling. According to Hemlata R, the guidelines would facilitate the attainment of the goals stated in the National Nutrition Policy 
and the guidelines are consistent with the goals set in the national policies for agriculture and health. What do you do now with these guidelines, particularly with reference to different constituencies? That kind of roadmap, that kind of how do you take this forward is completely missing. So in a way, I'm saying paper to practice. What is the roadmap for that? It's a very powerful set of guidelines only if this now reaches to the masses.